And this news just in, Intel has joined Risk 5 International as a premier sponsor. Apparently pigs can fly, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, and Han Solo didn't shoot first. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So this news comes on the back of several other announcements we've had recently about how Intel is changing its business model. I've covered those in other videos. If you want to know the broader context of what's going on over at Intel, I recommend you check out those videos. They'll be linked in the description below. Now, Intel is really two businesses that kind of uh, are married together in one company. And there is in the past been talks of the fact they should be two separate businesses. On the one side, you've got the chip designing company that builds the processors, the i3, the i5, all the server chips and so on, and that we buy and put in our PCs and laptops. And the other side of the business is the company that makes those, physically fabricates those chips. So Intel designs its own chips and manufactures its own chips. And it's quite rare in the uh, computer industry, in the uh, silicon chip industry, that it actually does that. And again, I've got videos covering that. Again, uh, links in the description below. And sometimes these two things are in competition with each other. Most of the time they are working, uh, you know, kind of step by step. So Intel designs a new chip and then it self manufactures it. But this manufacturing business is getting more and more expensive. We're talking billions and billions of dollars it costs to build these fabrication plants, it costs to actually keep these things running. And so the Intel Foundry Services is kind of trying to be a bit of its own thing and it's kind of opening its doors to doing manufacturing to other companies besides just Intel itself. Of course, because only Intel makes Intel chips, AMD, of course, don't have their chips made at Intel. If it wants to make chips for other people, it's going to have to open its doors to people that make, want to build ARM chips or RISC-V chips. And that's why the Intel Foundry Services really has pushed for Intel to join RISC-V International. And so by joining RISC-V International, it's able to get its foot in the door and work with its partners in the RISC-V ecosystem and tempt them to come and get their chips built at the Intel, uh, Intel Foundry Services. And by saying, we'll optimize this and we'll work with you for that and we'll make sure that's compatible. It's all gonna be easy. Come and have your chips made uh, for us because of course, lots of chips to be made on some of the older nodes that Intel have got factories for and they can still keep making chips. And of course they're investing in new factories for building uh, new chips. So they want as many customers besides just Intel itself, an internal customer to kind of boost that business. And there are three kind of RISC-V uh, CPUs that uh, Intel are kind of hoping to get. One is a company designs its own chip based on RISC-V and says, hey, Intel, can you make this for us? And they say, yeah, absolutely no problem whatsoever. There is the times when actually RISC-V can kind of get incorporated into some kind of product and Intel will manufacture that for them. But the main point, the main thing they want to get into is chiplets. Now, chiplets is this idea that rather than putting everything on a single piece of silicon, so for example, on a system on a chip, you would get the GPU and the CPU and you know a DSP and an image uh, sin, a signal processor and loads of other stuff all on a single piece of silicon, a single die. Now with chiplets, what you do is you say, well, that's great, but it, that's a real tight level of integration. What I want is my own chip that I've made a system on a chip, but I still want access to this other thing, this other hardware accelerator, this other thing that can do this particular function. And I don't want to include it inside of my actual uh, piece of silicon. It'd be great if it was on a piece of silicon on the same physical package. So by package, we mean, if you kind of look at the PC, well, that thing with all the pins on it that, that you put into a socket, when you kind of deal with smartphones and laptops and things, they, they're kind of soldered directly, Raspberry Pis, you know, they're sold directly to the board. But that package, would it be great if I could have access to those other bits of silicon, those things on the same package, using a high speed die to die, piece of silicon to piece of silicon interconnect, so I can talk really quick to not losing by going out over PCI Express or something to some other part of the motherboard, right here next to me, high speed, but it's not mine. I just want to glue it onto my package and talk to it. And that's called system on a package. And so chiplets live in a system on a package where you have a main processor in the middle, maybe a system on a chip, 
uh, and you've kind of got GPU, CPU and other stuff. And then you want access to some other dedicated things. And those other dedicated things can be based on RISC-V, for example, to do, you know, whatever, cryptography, machine learning, uh, or whatever it is the area that you're going into, uh, image processing, but based on a RISC-V a CPU controlling all that stuff. And then you talk over this die-to-die -die, uh, interconnect uh, on the package itself. And Intel saying, we've got advanced 3D package when they mean that, they mean you can put multiple things on top of each other. It's a three-dimensional kind of chip package, lots of things squeezed in there. We've got this advanced technology and you can build your chip with us using whatever it is you want to do. Some stuff from Intel, some stuff from other people, some stuff from RISC-V, even ARM, RISC-V and Intel all mixed together if that was possible, if the right licensing agreements exist, and then you can get it manufactured at us. Now, of course, the Intel people who do the designing of chips, well... They're just going to have to swallow this. They're like going to not going to have much to say about it because it's the foundry business that really wants to do this. And the moment they've started to diverge them slightly, they're going to have to accept some kind of things that means that they're accepting rivalry between them. Now, if they can manage that well, if the CEO can manage that well, it's going to be OK. Of course, it can get out of hand where, you know, the, the misunderstandings and priorities and investment and so on can kind of make that difficult. We'll see uh, if they can wa walk that tightrope of both being both designer and a manufacturer and a manufacturer for, for rivals. And also at the tail end of the fact that they've joined the RISC-V International, uh, Intel are launching a $1 billion fund to support startups that are working in chiplets, for example, want to take advantage of this, and also for supporting the open source ecosystem for, pro for software to run on any of these chiplets and any of these kind of hybrid combinations of things that they come up with. So of course that means Linux for sure for starters, but also maybe anything else that they need in terms of machine learning or whatever. There is funding available for that across universities and even in commercial spaces. So really Intel are putting a lot of money behind this. They're joining RISC-V and they really want to push their foundry service. Now, if you roll forward, you know, five, 10 years, does this mean that Intel itself will adopt uh, Risk five. I don't see that at the moment. As I've said in my other videos, of course, we had the whole Itanium fiasco that still stings in the history of what uh, Intel have tried to do with their CPUs. Will they move over to using Risk five? Certainly, that's not something I see at the moment. Will they move over to using Risk five as a chiplet inside of, for example, a server chip, and then they're putting in chiplets in there for I/O connectivity for machine learning. Uh, yes, I can see that definitely happening. Will the main processor go away from uh, x86, 64 to RIS-5? No, not at the moment, but we're starting to see the merging of these technologies. So it's going to be an interesting few years ahead of us. Okay, and whether you think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, whether you think Han Solo shot first, well, you tell me in the comments below and we'll talk about that there. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, Intel stuff, ARM stuff, chip stuff, software stuff, then hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just a newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.